time is running faster, we can feel it. Some say we have 17-hour days now. Any comments? Oh, absolutely. I'm experiencing an incredible acceleration of time. This year has just whizzed past. I mean, just stop and think for a moment. We wasn't long ago we were looking forward to 2011 thinking, wow, that's so far ahead. And <laughs> here we are, and now in a few weeks it's going to be 2012 all of a sudden. Mm. Amazing. Like, what, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's definitely an acceleration of time going on. It's proportional with the Earth increasing her spin on her axis. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way the Earth revolves around the sun, they're, they're synchronized. So it's it kind of like it's difficult to tell for some people if they're caught in the matrix. But for most people, I mean, everyone I talk to, there's just not enough hours in the day anymore. It's It's mm -hmm. definitely changed. Yeah, it does kind of feel like um, it may be the equivalent of what we used to know as 17-hour days. Like, uh, I mean, I don't know if I could put a number on it like that or anything, but I'm certainly feeling that myself as well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, time, there's moments where reality slows down. So I'll say it is fluctuating, so, but it's kind of like taking five steps forwards, two steps back. Five steps forward, yeah. four steps back. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but over, yeah. Overall, it's moving forward. Mm -hmm. So e even though it feels like it slows down at times, the overall movement, momentum, probably the right word to use, the overall momentum is that this reality is accelerating um, at quite a rate. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, here's another one. Um, it reads... Yesterday, George said that we shouldn't let people feed off our energy and to be ourselves. But I'm very much myself, and in my work, people feed off me all the time. Are there exceptions where it's appropriate, though tiring? Um, well, I think it's an individual case-by-case -case situation. If that person feels that they want to continue to allow the people to feed off them, that's up to them. But... I don't want people to feed off me anymore and I make a conscious effort that when I'm, people are talking to me and they're just throwing shit at me, um, pardon my expression, I use that word again, crap at me, <laughs> um, um, it, it really just, I say within myself, I'm no longer going to feed you, you have no right. And uh, you can look at that person and for me, I can actually, more often than not, feel what's plugged into them, like um, I had um, someone close to me and they were really talking to me in a crazy sort of way and giving me a hard time about something, so I just totally tuned out of that and tuned into them, um, not the conversation, but tuned into them, and then I saw this big green reptilian standing behind them, and so this person that was close to me was giving me a really hard time and the reptilian was realized that I was seeing him, and it was a male, uh, coming through a female, and, uh, and he was just laughing at me. Because mm. he knew there was, that, you know, you can't, you can't tell the person what you see and what's happening. Yeah. So I, I, I just said to him, thank you for your service, but all your efforts are just water off a duck's back, and then he got really angry. Mm. Um, because he realized what he was doing had absolutely no effect on me. Mm. Um. It was really quite an exchange. So you can, you can function on these multi-dimensional levels in an instantaneous moment. So you can have a conversation with somebody, expand your awareness from that just the realm of that conversation, realize what is happening, the dynamics of what is taking place, and you can speak to the higher person and say, look, you know, I love you anyway and I appreciate what you're saying and, you know, the lessons, because the person that's speaking to you in that way is also role-playing for you because you've got something to learn from that. That's why you've attracted into your life. So it's always important to ask, okay, what do I have to learn from this? And mm -hmm. I just feel the person that's asking this question has still got, you know, um, is caught with guilt between a life of servitude and their interpretation and understanding of what a life of servitude to others is all about, a life of service, and actually reclaiming one's sovereignty. Um, because a lot of the higher spiritual concepts, um, what we deem higher spiritual concepts, to me are really 4D cosmic mind concepts. 
Uh, mm. They're very sophisticated and they promote lack, scarcity, uh, subservience, and all of that is glorified into humility and a life of service. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be careful the way these things are packaged um, because, you know, Christy, you and I are living a life of service. We're doing what we can to serve our human family, and yes. many people are. Even if you're just a cleaner in a in yes. a school or a hospital, you still, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, so there's notions of what a life of service is all about and the reality, the greater reality of what a life of service is all about. So mm -hmm. I would say try not to get caught up too much in these mind-bending philosophical expressions of what a life of servitude is all about and know that you have every right to defend your sovereignty and we're right at the point now in the journey of humanity and this planet that we have every right now to no longer allow these entities to feed off us one way or another. David Icke, uh, how do we log off? How do we... How do you view the situation from here on out? Well... If you're faced with a situation that you want to change, that there's basically two main choices. You can find a solution or you can remove the cause of the problem. And removing the cause of the problem is um, much more advisable and much more effective because, you know, we can run around trying to find solutions when what we need to do is to remove the cause of the problem and then we don't need a solution. And uh, the cause of the problem is that we have been manipulated into um, a five sense um, body computer mind level of perception. Now what this creates is a false identity so that we look in the mirror and we think the reflection is who we are. When that's the reflection is the vehicle that we are experiencing and allowing us to experience this reality is the body computer conduit to this virtual reality universe. And um, if we come from that level that f uh, false self-identity, we are going to think in terms of limitation, I can't, I have no power, little me, what can I do? Um, and therefore we're going to look to others um, to protect us, to tell us what to think and, and all the rest of it. Fundamental to everything is moving our point of observation from I am the reflection in the mirror to I am infinite consciousness having an experience. I am not my name. I'm not David Icke. David Icke's the name of my experience. Um, it's not who I am. I am all consciousness. So are you. So is everyone listening to this program. So is everything in all existence. So once you move that point of observation, your life starts to change. You stop thinking in terms of I can't. You stop thinking in terms of limitation and you stop thinking in terms of fear because consciousness and awareness of itself has nothing to fear and one of the things I, I, I say to people is when you're in a situation ask yourself what would consciousness do and would consciousness um, uh, uh, riot because of something it doesn't like no would consciousness fight a war no would consciousness uh, fear authority and therefore keep its head down and its mouth shut no um, and and if once you come from consciousness, you you you, you, you uh, that's your level of self. That fundamentally changes everything. And then we need to look at taking control of the body computer. With nothing wrong with it, it's a conduit to allow us to experience this reality. Without it, we would we would be doing that. What's happened instead of um, the body computer mind serving consciousness, it's become the governor of our perception. And for genetically manipulated and, and other manipulative reasons, um, that's exactly what it was we, the position we were supposed to be in. We are manipulated through overwhelmingly the reptilian brain. So another way that we can remove the cause of the problem is to look at the traits that we get from the reptilian brain. Cold-blooded behavior, having no empathy with the consequences of um, our actions for other people. So let's reverse that. Let's remove the cause of the problem. So when we start to uh, um, observe our behavior, when we start to fall into this um, lack of empathy, um, well, and, and instead of saying uh, when we're faced with choices or situations, what's the right thing to do for me, um, say, what is the right thing to do here? What is the fair and just thing to do in this situation 
Um, by doing that, you are disconnecting yourself from the cold-blooded me, me, me um, um, level of, of, of the reptilian brain's awareness. You are, you are logging off that particular program. Um, uh, the reptilian brain uh, perceives um, reality through might is right, through acquisition, through more and more. We can reverse that um, uh, level of um, reaction response and uh, uh, log off from the um, influence of the reptilian brain on our behavior. And crucially uh, in all this, we can stop uh, reacting emotionally through quote as um, scientists say about the reptilian brain and what we get from it we can stop reacting from primitive emotional responses once we do that instead of reacting out of fear reacting out of fight or flight to situations that we face be it a, a pandemic a situation in our lives uh, terrorism whatever we uh, calmly take a deep breath take a step back and look at it um, calmly and sensibly before we make a decision on how we're perceiving this situation. By doing that, we are disconnecting ourselves from one if not the major mechanism of human control, which is to trigger these primitive emotional responses, all of them based on fear and the survival mechanism. Going on from that, consciousness is or, um, um, or always has been and always will be. Com consciousness doesn't die. Just as the, the we don't die, we withdraw from the body computer. That's what we ludicrously call death. Um, it's like if I'm sitting here when I finish this interview, I'll shut the computer down and I'll go off in the front room. Um, symbolically, um, I've died because my computer has uh, its life force has been switched off and me consciousness has left the room has left the reality um, so consciousness doesn't die consciousness is eternal consciousness is um, um, all possibility all knowing so um, from that point of view what do we have to uh, get caught um, in these survival responses for we have nothing to survive because there is no death and the fear of death um, and the survival mechanisms manifest in so many ways and trigger control through the reptilian brain. Fear of death is the classic. Oh, doctor, save me. That's why we give power to doctors and the medical profession and the transnational drug cartel. It's because we, we, we have uh, this fear of death. A fear of financial problems, fear of losing your job, fear of losing your partner, fear of what people think of you. All these are expressions of the survival mechanism which allows access to our reality and behavior responses through the reptilian brain. So, again, deep breath. There's nothing to survive. And consciousness, if we access it and flow with it, will all, and I know this from my own personal experience, will always provide what we need. No need to worry about it, no need to panic, no need to, oh my goodness me, what's going to happen? Flow with it and know that what you need will come when you need it. Took me a long time to relax into this, but after a, a while of going to the brink in my life on so many things, when it was almost about to collapse, and right at the moment it was about to collapse, um, the cavalry arrived in some form, and eventually I took the hint and I thought, this is telling me something, and what is it telling me? no need to worry about anything and I stop worrying and my goodness me how that disconnects you from these primitive emotional responses which control us yeah. you become laid back and, 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 and at peace with self and at peace with the world so I'm dealing now with all this real challenging information on one level and, and all these uh, things that are going on but I am as calm as you could imagine. Um, I, I have no fear of it. I have no panic of it or anything because I've gone into this space of everything will come to me as I need it and I'm not going to worry about the future. I'm just going to live in the now. And that's another key thing. The understanding that there is no time. Um, everything happens in the now. And people say, but there's a past. Okay, um, what happened? Where are you when you think of the past? Oh. Well, I'm in the now, yeah. Where are you when you think of the future? Well, I'm in the now, yes. The past and the future are um, 
uh, mental constructs which we experience in the now. And if we get pulled into the past of guilt and what if, and we get pulled into the future, oh my God, what's going to happen? I've got to, got to, got to, but we're not living in the now, and therefore we're not living in our power. And I could go on and on and on. There are so many ways that we can disconnect from this system, access our real power, and then this house of cards will come to us. Well, that's what it is. Science has come full circle. Science is always, I mean, our science is good science, but it's always been based on the physical and mechanical. We want to explain things in a mechanical way. And that's, that's our science. And it, it is good science, but it's, it, it's, it's limited in what it does because of its approach on a mechanical level. If you go and look at these other cultures, you'll find that they all start from that level. Sure, you know, where everything's connected and, and we can affect this reality with with our emotions, they start from there. <laughs> and our science has been trying to figure all this out in a mechanical way, but it's got to a certain ex extent now where it's gone full circle and it's come back to mysticism because that's the only way science is able to explain itself. And science is finding out that there is physical and mechanical reasons for this mysticism. What with this energy that I say people can produce, this, this love energy that you can produce, if you really want to look at it on a scientific level, I mean, Greg Braden explains it very well. I was talking to you about Greg Braden on the phone the other day. He explains it very well when he says that um, thought, we manifest this thought in our head, and that thought doesn't really mean anything unless it's imbued with emotion. And it's emotion given to the thought that creates the feeling. And this is what I was saying about this feeling that you can get, this wonderful giving feeling that you can give out to people, and it's literally an energy that you can feel and you can replenish the, the energy field with this. And he's explaining that the thought happens in the in the top two chakras up in your head, what the, what the Indians call chakras, but some modern scientists of, of our scientists just call them energy points. But they do acknowledge that they exist. The Indians and the mystics call them chakras. So the thoughts manifest in the, in the top two energy centers. The emotion manifests in the bottom two energy centers, or the bottom three, the three at the top and three at the bottom. And then they, they meet in the center, and the center is, is the heart. That's the heart chakra, the heart energy center. And that's what manifests the feeling, and that leaves your heart as an electrical feeling. Your heart is, is literally an electromagnetic generator, and it generates this energy, and it replenishes the field, it replenishes yourself. You can feel it when you do something compassionate, when you do something really good for someone. You can feel this stuff in your body. You get that great feeling. And it's, if you think about it, it's a physical, tangible, electrical feel that you've just generated. And it's been generated by your heart. That's what your heart does. And that's where the feeling comes from. That's where the emotion comes from. If you can realize that, that if, if you imbue a thought with emotion, it becomes this heart frequency that you give out. And that's how it works. That's how you generate this electrical field, this energy field that I keep talking about to give to other people. That's how you do it.
there's only one thing you really need to know. Infinite love is the only truth. Everything else is illusion. 